Hello everyone and thank you for coming to the channel. That channel is Deb Chanel's 48th World. And we're going to be going in a little reunion recap on, of course, Potomac. Um, let me see. What is this? It's Potomac. Uh, the Real Housewives of Potomac, Season mm -hmm. 6, Episode 21, Reunion Part 4. Honey, baby, it was the Nicki Minaj takeover reunion. And she sat, or she had sat down, um, Andy Cohen, which that was a pleasant surprise. And she was actually good at hosting. I'm like, Nicki, girl, we know you have a podcast. We know you have a little radio show. We know... What you are known for, which is rapping and looking good, girl. But you should really think about hosting a gig. Not just a reunion, but to try to be something like Andy Cohen. Hell, you should even replace Andy Cohen. Or definitely come on and do the reunion for The Real Housewives of Atlanta. Oh my goodness, you would be the bomb. But anyway, I used to review The Real Housewives of Potomac and Married to Medicine way a long time ago. So if you want to check out your girl and see how she spun things, uh, doing reviews on those shows, go on over to my archive selection side and you will get your kiki and laugh on because I was with... The Real Housewives of Potomac when they first came out. When they had Katie still there and Sharice. And of course you had Ashley, Robin, Giselle, uh, Karen. And that's it. And I think shortly after I started giving it up. Because it came, it really just came to me to be really boring. It was showing the same old, same old that Real Housewives of Atlanta was giving. And then I was doing Real Housewives of Dallas. So I was just like, okay, which one can I really keep up with that just won't bore the hell out of me? So, of course, I tried to do uh, the Dallas one. But, because uh, I know that I, Katie... Uh, was on the show at the time and she was funny 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 okay and then she left and then Sharice left and it just seems to me the only casting that they really wanted to keep that had its nemesis and it was just something like Nene and Portia no, I'm sorry. It was like Kenya and Portia or Nene and Kim. That kind of camaraderie. But it kept being Giselle and Karen. Giselle and Karen. I just got tired of it. You know what I'm saying? So I bounced. But, honey, when I was waiting on the Real Housewives uh, of Portia show, Family Matters, I really thought they said 8 o'clock. But my goofy self got it mixed up. And I'm with going on to Bravo watching the Real Housewives of Potomac. And I'm like, damn, okay, I'll go on and watch this. And honey, Nick Bernard, she showed up and showed <laughs> out, honey. The women didn't know. I evidently, Andy must have did the first three um, reun part reunions. And then this last part, which was four, Nikki came out and guest starred. And honey, she had the women on their Toes. She was to me, it ain't like she really didn't get in with one person real bad. She got in all of them pretty much, or what she wanted to give them. But she mainly kind of like infringed on Candace a little bit. She infringed on uh, Ashley, which I don't know why, but she did. Okay, she just had to make some points there. But she needed to with Candace because Candace was all over the place. She was, evidently she really don't like Mia for some reason. And Mia's older than she is seasoned and she's dating or married to somebody much older than herself. And she used to be a stripper. And so she was just like, okay. And Candace was like, I don't know, this all American black girl going around here married to this white man. She got the swirl going on. And her mother just humiliates her. And I don't know if her mother just don't like white people or whatever. Or she, I, I really don't know. But, I mean, I caught some of it here and there. 
just flipping through the TV, and I could I caught a a, a, a taping where uh, Candace's mom was being a little bit too much, over dramatized in a sense, like she wanted to be on the show as one of the cast members. But I was like, okay, I can't watch them. Moving on, but Andy showed up and show out and gave his hosting chair for this particular reunion part four to Miss Nicki Minaj, and honey, she took over. Can you say taking over? Taking over. Yes, honey, she took over. And she was drilling them ladies. But let's get on into it. She started with Ashley at first. Honey, she was making a total mockery out of Ashley. She was saying, Ashley, you just saw somebody's ass. You you always saw Janzel ass. You always saw Robin's ass. You you just come in and just want to start stuff. She said, you ain't been here half the season because you was off having babies or, you know, your second child. And then you just want to come in for some quick taping time. So you thought you would just come in and start some stuff. So she was just really, really, really drilling uh, Ashley behind. And then she was saying, you know, you just want to make smoke with Wendy. You, and you know Ashley, I mean, um, Giselle, you know, she's here and there with Wendy, but... You know, you were just trying to drive the steak home. And then Nikki was saying, uh-uh, because uh, Giselle was just talking behind her back. But you came and just stabbed her in her face. And then uh, um, Wendy was trying to make, you know, some, you know, like make it seem like it was more so Giselle. And she didn't take offense what Ashley was doing or what Ashley was saying. She wanted to get uh, Giselle all hemmed up. And I'm like, see, Giselle, you know, she is kind of crazy. She wants to throw her hands at a glass house and then hide and stuff of that nature. Just like we need to get on her about Jamal. Yeah. But uh, Wendy didn't like um, Giselle. Giselle don't really care for Wendy. I don't know if it's a dark skin, light skin type thing. And, you know, then Mia was trying to get her little two cents in. I'm like, hold your roll. Slow your roll, Mia. We're going to get to you. You know, you're the stripper. We're going to pretty much say you for the last. That's what Nikki was giving me. Okay. But she was like, mm, I don't know. I don't know. Ashley's just doing a little bit too much. She needs to stand on her own and not be saying, you know, uh, coming and trying to get her clips in at the last scenes of the episode and trying to show her ass. Then she was trying to pit uh, her husband against, um, what's her name? Robin's husband. She was saying, um, she, what she really was trying to do was insinuate was Ashley's, I'm not Ashley, yeah, Ashley's husband, Michael, was he gay? You know, and that's always been since season one when he was messing around with Katie's husband or what's his uh, husband? No, she was trying to get married to her husband. I don't forgot what his name was. Ain't important anyway. But anyway, um, Michael, Ashley's husband was grabbing on uh, Katie's uh, fiance's butt. You know, like it wasn't nothing. I know he was taking a uh, fancy to uh, Katie's husband at that time. I mean, Katie's boyfriend at that time, fiance, if you must. And it was just a whole big deal of Michael really being bisexual. You know, because we knew he was married to uh, Ashley. And they eventually had gotten pregnant and had a, their first son. And they ended up having another son. You know, it is what it is. But that's not saying that he's not attracted also to men. He could be bisexual. Hell, we said that from the first season of Michael being on the show. But, uh... You know, it just played its way out, and it was just like a standing joke. So, Nick was like, you know, girl, he really like Juan. Is Juan attracted to um Michael? And, you know, of course, Robin was just acting stupid, you know, saying, girl, I don't know what you're talking about. Blah, blah, blah. Of course, we know my, uh, Juan might be gay, too, he, or bisexual. You know, she don't know. She ain't going to say. Uh, but it is, it is what it is, so. For some reason, Nikki just wanted to jump on Ashley first. And like I said, it was no pun intended. Like, she didn't like her. She just chose her to get on first. Because she got uh, six more other women to get on individually. So, we move off of uh, Ashley. Because, you know, she wasn't too much back then when I was renewing her. It don't seem like she clammed up. And here we are, you know, season six. And that was season one was way, way back when. They still... Doing the old crazy stuff. And see, that's Sharice. I think her name was. That's when we had this group. Because Ashley was married at the time. Well, she was just dating. 
hell i can't remember i think she was married look i can't really remember i think she was married but they hadn't had any kids at the time and then you had um katie and sharice that we just saw the black lady off to the right uh side of that photo that just we just had but then we got these newcomers uh such as maya x stripper and um uh, she just likes showing her body pretty much and then we got this scene <laughs> where uh nikki drills uh giselle about why does she make uh that awful comment to uh ray that she would be still fine and living he'll still be six feet under or she'll still be beautiful after he done died i mean he she knows he's already old so we giving him about a couple of more years uh, about five more years tops and when he go under the ground and be depleting and, and decomposing and all that kind of stuff she's still gonna be looking gorgeous fabulous you know fierce and really basically she was just hurt from what ray was saying which he was i guess giving her the truth or his truth of the situation or the topic they were discussing and giselle couldn't um she couldn't manifest what he was saying so she went into fight or flight mode okay so that was just her way of getting back at him but i think she apologized to ray but i'm not really sure if she did because you know giselle is very vain and if her beauties went left for whatever reason she wouldn't she would be totally uh depressed and, and probably want to be suicidal you know what i'm saying because she just know her looks and her color got her where she is you know what i'm saying she used it uh, to represent pushing her further on into greater opportunities so she's capitalizing on her looks okay but she's not dumb thus far but i'm just saying she's using that as a forefront to push her even further up the ladder in the entertainment world um but then we get off of um ashley even though we were kind of talking about giselle and we can't really go on to giselle Nikki got in her behind, like I said, about her vainness and, you know, she feeling like she's on one side of the street and uh, me and her on the other side of the street. She was saying, you know, her looks is just that pronounced and profound. Me and come over to the other side where she at just to meet her or say hey to her. I like, girl, girl, okay. And Nikki was kind of like dumbfounded, you know, because she's a gorgeous lady herself. She knows she look good but she ain't putting it all like that out there like you know i guess she felt giselle was doing i guess she was trying to say giselle be a little bit more grateful or, or gracious you know let people actually give you compliments not that you looking for them and you know they should give them to you she's just you know trying to get giselle straight in that aspect um and then she had said and she was doing comparisons side by side of Giselle then and Giselle how she is now. And she was like, do you think your beauty is fading? And honey, Giselle looked like she wanted to fall out that chair like, who are you talking about? Did you just insult me? Are you trying to say I'm ugly now? What? You, I don't know. Honey, it was written all over Giselle's face and her demeanor that she was not pleased with Miss Nick. And when Nick just brought it to her like that. I said, ooh, serve her up, honey. Come through, Nick. Come through with the get back. Because you talking about her and she looking at you and both of y'all cute. And she's trying to see where you coming from. <laughs> and Nick, Nick said, honey, I'm young. I got money. I'm on every platform that you wish you were on and, and what <laughs> just there because they nothing because she didn't want to say the wrong thing because she know nikki is very well known in the entertainment um business and if she don't like somebody she thinks she got a shoe in with controlling where giselle could go in the entertainment business she would stop it if she could and so giselle didn't want to open her mouth no she did she didn't want to open her mouth then she started asking the ladies uh in particular or individually if they had say a billion dollars or whatnot in their banks would they be married to the men that they are hosting on their arms right now you know like she even asked uh Karen, not karen uh, yeah karen uh what did she would she be with ray still and of course she said girl yeah i'll be with my man and to tell you the truth i think karen would be she ain't lying she loved that man honey even if he became broke tomorrow she would still be loving on that man so i think she was attracted because she knew he had money but i really think she saw something in that man he did something for her okay uh <laughs> mentally i want to say 
Uh, then she asked uh, Maya, and Maya was just like, girl, look at me. Do you really think I would be with that man if I had all that money? She didn't want to say, no, nah, I wouldn't be with him, honey. I'd probably be with a white man or Asian man. Something like that, okay? Something to fit my taste. But since we're not in that and I'm not making that kind of money, I'm going to play the safe card and say, yes, I'd be with him still. But on her face and her demeanor, honey, she was like, no. She would drop that man like four fat ties, okay? Then she went to Candace and Candace was like, yeah, she was still like Michael. I mean, Chris, I think that's his name. And Ashley was like, you know, she'll still be with Michael. And Robin, you know Robin ain't going nowhere, honey. She she like black men. And uh, ain't nothing wrong with that. You know, some people like white men. You know, ain't nothing wrong with that. But ain't nobody going to put up with Robin. And, and, no, Robin is like one of those settled women now where she can't have her pickings. I can say, I can say that. Uh... She'd be like off the market in a sense, in a bad way, because it's not like she has that body, that wow factor in her face, that youngness to her. So, no, she better off staying with um, one she used to him. She ain't even try to get rid of them when they caught themselves filming uh, on the first part of the show, season one through probably season four she's still been dripping dropping you know riding with Juan. even Juan was going out dating on her behind she was sitting at home with the kids i'm like i can't stand this understanding of saying you're divorced but yeah y'all living together i never understood that per diem i i, I, just, I just i just can't wrap my head around it you know what i'm saying so i'm like oh when she was still sleeping with Juan and Juan going out there dating other women probably sleeping with them too it, it was just a sad sad state of events and i see she's still in that situation even though she said you know one is fiending for her now and enjoying you know her new look i'm like how many looks did she have she been on the show for six seasons what happened in the first four what were you doing then so i just really think if anything one has gainful employment he feel like somebody now then she got this job with real housewives or potomac and or the housewife franchise and you know everything seems to be good now he can rest he don't feel lesser than a man this that and the third okay so that's all i thought it was really about um robin's still boring as hell i don't care she's still getting folks business she's still been a snitch she's still been a, a bone collector it just is what it is pretty woman um uh, seems like she loves her family but she just i mean she's gonna be like cynthia i mean like when are we gonna get rid of robin robin ain't doing nothing over there but, uh, but anyway moving on um then let me see Oh, yeah, and I did tell y'all about uh, <laughs> Nikki threw a curveball at her behind. But, you know, Robin done by ass. She just, you know, kind of, uh, it went over her head. She didn't really care. And she might think that her husband is bisexual. Who knows, okay? Hell, Robin may be bisexual to come to think about it. You know, we, we don't know. But just how she funds out the Giselle and she kind of like a, uh, Ashley in a way. Then they all said and throwing Candace right on in the middle. If it was, uh, if they, if somebody gave them a billion dollars, they would sleep with each other. So I'm like, see what the money do? Do you see? Running, chasing the money instead of the money chasing them. They would do anything for that dollar. You see what I'm saying? Them fall on that couch. Candace. Giselle, Robin, and Ashley. They would get down. They would get down together. Carpet crunch and munch or however you call it. Just to get that billion dollars. Like, don't y'all have any ethical morals about yourselves. Don't. Where is it gone? Where is it gone? But anyway. And then their kids are old enough. Well, maybe not Ashley's kids. Maybe not Candace's kids. But Giselle and Robin kids, they old enough to know if they even thinking about looking at the television show that their parents are on. They will have to go ill and to think that, you know, the roots that they aren't seeing it or their kids, friends aren't seeing it and tell them about it. Woo, child. It's not a good look. That's all I'm saying. Not a good look. Not a good look. Okay. So we move off of Robin. And we, we really pretty much handled Giselle. We get on Karen. 
Okay. Um, Karen, I mean, Nikki is asking Karen, how is she doing? How is Ray doing? And it seems like she was very playful this season with Ray sitting on top of them and all of that. She was asking about their little life. And basically, you know, uh, Karen ain't going to get down and tell you about her little life like that. But she said everything's good in the neighborhood, okay? She love herself and her, her husband, okay? So, um, then she was trying, Nikki was trying to get um, Karen to elaborate more on what she meant when she told Giselle, this ain't what you want. Because <laughs> Nikki said, them fighting words, girl. Them fighting words, not with that witchy. What you mean, this ain't what you want? And then she, she was just explaining it to Nikki. You know, it's basically like when you don't got tired of a person, they don't went too far, they don't cross all bar, ba boundaries and stuff, and you, you just want to get get them off of you. You know what I'm saying? So either you got to get the paws on, on them or you got to get some lawsuits started. And, of course, it seems like um, – Karen was trying to go gutter with her, so she was going to, like, try to slap her around. Because, you know, the housewives on that, this franchise of Bravo, they can't sue each other. No, ma'am, no, Lord, no, God. They can't. They, it's a, it's a, uh, some kind of contract they sign. Or within their contract, it states that they can't uh, press charges against each other. And they can't sue Bravo. So, I'm sure they, you know, if something ever occurs like that, like it occurred with, um, uh, Portia and Kenya wanted to pull another hair situation. Kenya wanted to get lawsuits on uh, Bravo and, and Kenya. But, I mean, uh, and on Portia. But they, they worked it out. They they worked it out very p peaceful and amicably. They made Portia go to anger management. You know, it wasn't a choice. It was a must do. It was an order and uh, of her actually staying on the show. And she probably got penalized. She probably had to pay some money to Kenya uh, to smooth things over. And they could never in their lifetime talk about it uh ever you know even when the show is in syndication they probably got it written down now not ever because i had did um andy Cohn was uh just spelling out some different things of uh, the do's and don'ts of the housewives franchise and that was one of them but i do have a video in my archive that specifically is titled that so go take a look at it if you want to and you'll see what the housewives can do and what they can't do okay uh within their contracts to one another on the show um let me see oh da, 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 da. and then they would go they was uh some of the girls were kind of teasing karen about not knowing what um uh, tossing the salad was about or uh licking the balls and stuff of that nature and karen was just acting like she was appalled and nikki was teasing her like girl you know you don't toss the salad before and she's like no i haven't and you know she was laughing and kicking but karen was like i ain't sucking nobody balls i ain't licking nobody balls oh, okay especially the asshole i was like go on karen girl go on tell it like it is so they pretty much got off the uh, uh queen dumb the uh glam dumb or you know, I don't know what Karen called herself, glam dom or queen dom or something like that. Because uh, at the time, Nikki was the uh, grand dom at the time. But, um, you know, Karen let her have it for this show taping or whatnot. But then we went to Maya. And Maya was a fan favorite. Um, let me see. What I have typed up on Maya? Uh, Maya gets, gets on her about her mom. Okay, no. Nikki got on uh maya about how her mom was treating her and always saying you know when she acts out or she tries to assert herself towards her mom her mom says disappointing stuff like you just like your daddy you know like she really put her daddy down and she really didn't uplift her dad or found any good attributes about her dad she was always talking negative about her dad and you know uh maya really loved her dad and she didn't understand uh the significance of putting her mom in her place when it came to talking about her dad because i think he's deceased now or something to that effect and nikki was like girl you better check your mama you know you better tell her that shit hurts you when she compares you to her to your dad and it's a demeaning way she said you need to get on her and tell her you know look this is not how you treat me you know give her some border because you're a grown woman so she should not be disrespecting you in that way and saying that every time it's a flaw uh with her character or she don't like something her daughter's doing then she gonna say you just like your dad you know what i'm saying so 
she was saying, you know, mothers need to do better when it comes to their daughters because their daughters might start repeating that same behavior in their children's lives, and you can't do it. And I understood what Nikki was saying about that. Uh, and if you don't handle it, yeah, it will get out of control, and you will, you will be the one that's miserable and not the one that's infringing on your you know your life or or like your mom is infringing on telling you all this negative stuff about yourself that's not true but this is what she has played up in her mind and that's what she sees it so nikki's saying check your mama girl check your mama save your space uh save your you know your happy place um uh, don't let your mama tear it down for you um then she talks about uh her sex life with her husband by all this enhanced work she has done she's asking you know girl is that enhanced your sex life tell me girl i want to know you know nikki freaking as hell too uh so she wants to know all the comes and goings on you know all the work that she had done facially and body wise coochie wise you know are you getting more play from your daddy or your uh husband which she calls daddy uh and she was like, girl, yes, I am. Yes, I am, honey. I'm, I, she's like, are you getting in those uh, menage a trois type scenes? Girl, I want to know. I want to know what y'all doing over there. Y'all getting it freaking. And she said, yeah, honey, we can get the women going. And it's just okay since it's a, a fair playing field. And, you know, my, you know, set her up, walked into that one. She said, yeah, yes, a, a good playing field. So she said, you, you wouldn't mind no, no man coming in now. And then she said, hell, no, nah, ain't no man coming up in now. And I was like, oh, so you don't want to see the action between the two men and then they getting you off as well she said mm -mm, it has to be two women huh? two women and my man I like, oh girl okay nick was trying to say something nick was trying to breathe life into something and maya shut her down like mm -mm. and if i did do that i wouldn't tell it on public tv <clears throat> so i was like okay 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 and then she brought up something about uh enticing wendy's husband eddie and um uh, she was like nah honey because when got her husband so tight she like you can't be looking at me and i know i'm all that but she won't allow her husband to look at not now woman not now woman that she feel is better looking than her and nick was you know teasing with that going back and forth and when was like no nah, it ain't like that he can look at whoever he wants to he just know he need not to and um my so why you think you can run your husband oh uh, like wh who he can text and uh who he can look at and they, they was going back and forth so we could tell they don't like each other that well and i think it's just a play on bodies you know because maya got a banging body she looked like a, a full figure plus woman but she got all the nice curves you see what i'm saying so and she feels that her husband shouldn't be looking at uh maya and maya be like girl you can't hold no man wondering i as long as he don't act upon it but he should look he can look if he want to but uh no, wendy wasn't having it she wasn't having that at all okay then we go to wendy okay nikki crashes into nikki and i mean nikki crashes into wendy and say girl your husband be following booties he be following big booty women uh models don't he and then of course you know wendy getting all shy because she wasn't expecting nikki to come to her like that <laughs> raw and in charge right she said no nah, he don't be looking at no big booty women and then they had a little flashback uh on the show where i guess some um instagram uh photo got taken where it was with wendy's husband's actual instagram or tw twitter account or something to that effect and he was following these big booty women models and she, you know she just got all frustrated like i can't control who he look at i can't tell him this that, that. i'm like yeah because you ain't weak on 24 7 and you don't have his phone but other than that he been over there in the big booty women section the models they have them big booties okay and they dropping it like it's hot and then Nick was like, is that the reason why you went and had work done on your booty? You're trying to keep up with the um, models, the big booty models. And she said, how is that working out? And child, honey, Wendy was like, I ain't get, I ain't get my uh, booty done just because of those women. And my booty still ain't big as theirs. I said, oh, so you have been checking out the big booty uh, women models, honey. You had been checking it out, but you like you ain't finna put all that cement in your butt. You just get a little touch up and let it pump, be pumped up a little bit. But uh, she knew better. She knew better, honey. But Wendy, I not Wendy, but uh, Nikki was acting like Wendy Williams over there. 
getting all up in the tea. I'm like, damn, Wendy could, Nikki could replace Wendy Williams. But, of course, it would have to be the Nikki show. But it was just is what it is. Then, finally, we got down to Miss Candace. And I ain't really, we really didn't have nothing to say because Nikki was asking her, you know, why you letting your mama run all over you? Why you letting your mama coming in like a train wreck, trying to wreck your marriage? She talking down to your husband and talking down to you for marrying this type of guy. And it just ain't a good look. I'm like, damn, Nikki, get off these, these women and they mamas. Girl, what's going on with your Nick Nick? But she was like, I don't like you. I don't like you. You need to check your mama. You need to check your mama then. Candace said something stupid. She said, well, she'll listen to you. She ain't going to listen to me. And, and Nick was like, girl, she going to listen to you if you tell her, right? I ain't going to tell your mama. And then um, Cameron had said she had talked to Candace's mom and was trying to explain to her that, you know, if you don't, you know, chill in some way, you're going to lose your daughter. I'm like, Karen, no, she not. No, she not. She might lose her husband, but she ain't going to lose her mama. Because if he don't want to work out, he want to bounce. She still got her mama. So, you know, people need to just hush when it comes to trying to say things uh, to other um, people when they have controlling mothers. Uh, mothers that um, degrade their children or their daughters or whatever. Uh, we just need to just just listen. Don't make too many assumptions and don't make too many uh uh, suggestions just listen to them kind of people let them vent because they know how to handle them when they don't got to their last straw with their parent doing them like this it will come a day and they're gonna be bad for that particular parent they're gonna blow up they're gonna set them straight and then the cookie's gonna fall where they may the parent either gonna get in line or it's just gonna be a lost uh, parent situation where the child has decided to separate themselves totally and it's going to be a bad thing for that uh, child and that parent. And it's going to be a bad thing if the parent has children. Because then they're going to be like they don't want the grandparent to be involved. And it's going to be a bad situation. But, um, yeah, honey. Nick was trying to get in her ass about mm -hmm. her mama. Then she was trying to, um, she was trying to tell Candace. Uh, and you could tell Candace was kind of looking um, crazy at Nikki. And it seemed like, you know, she was trying to bring up these fake tears and stuff. And I'm like, girl, you ain't crying. Put that dish paper down. You just scared of your mama. And you ain't going to tell your mama what you really want until you have grown up and matured. And you have taken all you're going to take from her. It's going to be that last straw. It's going to hit home. And you're going to just tell your mama what you feel. And I, God knows it ain't going to come out right. But it's just going to come out how it is. And y'all just got to pick up the pieces off of television. And, you know, try to live in some type of amicable space with each other. Or you're not going to be in any kind of space with each other. Y'all just going to go through life. Either not speaking to each other and moving in two different directions. But uh, then um, Nick was just saying, just put some boundaries to your mom or whatnot. Then, honey, Nick is start talking about the girl's album. Because Candace is a little singer around here. And she's made a couple of videos. And uh, I seen one of them. And I'm like, okay. Kind of seemed like a little Portia thing. But she could sing a little bit better than Portia. And she, to me, she's like a background singer. But, uh, you know, she's not up to Kelly Rowland standard. Because Kelly, Rogan, Kelly Ro Rowland can actually sing. Uh, she's not even up to the level of the Scott sisters from Escape. They can sing. Uh, so, to me, Candace is okay. You know, I wouldn't want to go watch her in concert. Uh, I pretty much wouldn't want to buy her album but to me it's like she's a karaoke singer you know really a backup singer but anyway that was just my opinion you know it's is what it is uh but nikki was trying to ask you know how many albums have you sold then candy gave out this ridiculous figure which nikki didn't believe she said no nah, baby that's not it you know pretty much nikki was not really holding back she was giving face pretty much saying that girl you ain't selling no albums you might be selling singles you ain't selling no albums uh but it's okay it's okay and she was saying she had liked one of her songs and 
they had introduced her to um give us a sample of her video that's out there now which they did she's in the swimming pool doing whatever um um uh, it was cute um then she was just put on the spot just put her on the spot she's a girl slime <laughs> and candace was looking like what what you say? And she said, girl, give us a little something, something. Now, you know, most people that can sit up there and sign. They, they, what you say? Sing. Oh, and then they just break it all out. Hello, hello, hello. Or, you know, and they going on in today's song. Like, girl, can I have a mic? Okay. Can, when did she say, I don't know. I, I, I probably want to sing a gospel song for y'all. I said, girl, ain't nobody want to tap. Girl, you don't want, you want to sing a gospel song. But you sing a secular music. To make money on. Girl, get out of him. And I was like, damn, she might can't sign in. <laughs> you know you did a lot of auto tunes on your uh your album. And <laughs> I'm like, Nikki, why are you breaking the girl down like that? Why are you breaking the girl down like that? But yeah, I was like, okay, this girl can't sign. She ain't gonna sign. You know, and then Chris was down there. He was damn near trying to break his way to the stage, trying to save his poor wife. And I was like, what is Chris doing? He's doing all that muffling talking. You could he you could hear him, but he wasn't coming on that stage. No, he wasn't. And honey, she finally, finally gave us a little something, something. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, she was a background singer. She wasn't hard on the ears. And um uh, it was okay, you know. It, it, she didn't make a fool out of herself, I can tell you that much. We saw potential. Is it that raw potential? Um, No. It was like, you know, like I said, karaoke again. But like I said, um, child, it wasn't bad. It wasn't great. It was just in the middle, okay, for me. And um, Chris didn't like the fact that Nikki had put her on the spot like that. And it was just so much silence. You know, and people were coaxing her. Her castmates was coaxing her. Like, girl, girl, I'm saying, I'm saying. Nikki was like, girl, can you sing? But this was after the fact that she had said auto tunes. <laughs> I was like, Nikki, you crazy as hell. Girl, you crazy. But, uh, yeah, but she finally, it's almost like she got stage fright or something. And I'm like, you sit over here and clown on this show. You know, every time you get an episode that you have to tape. And then you're going to be scared to dr drop a little diddly here and there. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, girl, let somebody tell me to sing. If I'm saying I can sing and I don't put an album out there and, and a singles and videos, she, I'm like, oh, cut the lights off. Cut the lights down. Give me some of the cute lights. Let me, let me get in the mood. Then she finally told them to snap their fingers. Put your snack of fingers in the air and wave them like you just don't care. Now, that's me rapping, but, you know, <laughs> I was just saying she was telling her co-stars, uh, co co-workers. Uh, a castmates, I should say, to snap for, get the snapping fingers, and they got, you know, a good rhythm going on. Then she finally went on and sung. I'm like, damn, girl, that's all we were asking you to do? That's all we were asking you to do. But anyway, that's all I had, really, guys. I took a little longer because Nikki was just drilling for She would drill. I'm like, see, that's what we need. We need somebody to be able to come on here and host a show like Nikki did. Now, I tell you, Nikki need to come on over to the Real Housewives of Atlanta reunion and get these women straight and leave Andy Cohen at the doorstep. Let him be on the sidelines like he's producing a show or something or directing a show. That's what he need to do, be on the sidelines. And, and, and if somebody gets, you know, getting, you know, uh, out of their minds and think they want to come check somebody because after the show had ended uh, or went to a break, Honey, Chris went dashing to his wife, talking about, you know, I, I don't like how she did that, da, 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 da. And I'm like, man, you could have kept this shit off the stage on the sideline. We didn't want to see you. You want to say men be trying to, like Peter. Peter always up there trying to get into the mix of women's stuff. Now, this big burly man, Caucasian man, sitting up there talking about Nicki Minaj. I'm like, do you know who she is in the entertainment business? And your wife trying to be in the entertainment business. 
Man, you finna cop block your wife's determination and aspirations on being with big folks. You finna ruin your chances by opening up your mouth, you know, trying to get your 15 minutes of fame when you already on the darn show, man. Sit your head down somewhere. That's what I was trying to say. But, um, you know, Candace like, no, 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 she wasn't trying to do that. She, I'm like, why are you even explaining anything to him? You should have been checking him like... If you don't get off this stage, or we're going to have this conversation off air, okay? But right now, I need you to, you know, stop talking. Really, stop talking and, and go on about your business. Because right now, you're talking to my somewhat employee, which is Andy Cohen. And Andy Cohen was in the corner saying, no, 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 you did a real good job. Everybody was clapping for you. All the, the backstage sound people, they was, they was grooving to the door. I'm like, Andy, if you don't sit your fake behind down, too, sit your ass down, too. Both of y'all get off the stage. But you should have told him he cannot go off that stage. If he do it, you're going to put him out. He's going to be sitting outside somewhere. And he ain't got a tape no more. It's, it's 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 the end of the season, and we're gonna think about bringing you back, cause you're gonna keep doing this kind of mess. We don't need that. We didn't take that from Peter, okay? Or the Real Housewives of Atlanta, uh, men. We didn't do that, okay? You got to toe the line and get the hell out now. That's what you should have told Chris, but you know, I don't know, cause it was white on white, and they ain't want to get in that ass like they, you know, they do the, you know, the, the other folks. You know what I'm saying? Hell, it just is what it is. But that's all I have for this particular episode a reunion of the real housewives of potomac season six episode 21 reunion part four hell i hope it ain't no part five six and seven uh, i don't know if I, it depends on how y'all take it uh if y'all really look like y'all enjoyed it if it is a part five i may but uh, you know i don't know i don't know because i don't even watch chris i don't want to watch chris i really don't and i don't want to really watch maya's husband either because Ooh, child. Was that my Yeah, that was my husband. That was my husband acting up. Okay. But y'all, uh, y'all enjoy this video and I will see y'all next video, guys. I don't know what it will be, but it'll be something. Okay, be blessed. Bye.